What happens when self-defense is against the law? What happens when the protectors become the predators? What happens when innocents are betrayed? Imagine that two-thirds of all Americans disappear. 170 million people. Or that the countries of Germany, France, and Spain are virtually wiped off the map. 170 million people gone. In the 20th century, that's how many innocents were slaughtered, tortured, starved, mutilated, worked to death, bayoneted, hanged, annihilated at the hands of their governments. They had no means to defend themselves. In the early 1930s, the outside world believes the Soviet Union is a paradise for workers and peasants. But for millions, that paradise is hell. In those years, the people of Ukraine, the Volga Basin, and the Caucasus are being deliberately starved to death by their own government. The groundwork for that cold-blooded famine was laid when the communists came to power in 1917. Almost immediately, they passed a series of laws making it nearly impossible for non-party members to own firearms. They used licensing laws to tell them exactly who had guns, and with that information, they confiscated firearms. Penalties for possession of weapons grew more and more harsh. The Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin, fears enemies everywhere but especially in Ukraine, the breadbasket of Europe. Ukraine's prosperous farmers crave independence. Stalin craves their grain to pay for industrial expansion. In 1929, Stalin decrees that all farmland, livestock, and produce in the Soviet Union belong to the state. Farmers are ordered to surrender their land and livestock and move to government-owned collective farms. But first, to terrify the rest into submission, several million of the most prosperous farmers are sent to forced labor or killed outright. These kulaks, as the best farmers are called, are demonized and excluded from society. Armed government thugs steal their property, sneering, eat, drink, and be merry, for it all belongs to us. Next. Stalin demands extraordinary quotas of grain, quotas no one could possibly meet, quotas enforced by soldiers with guns. Many farmers rebel. Resistance is fierce. But because of 10 years of firearms confiscations, the helpless people can fight back only with farm tools or sabotage. The worst is still to come. In 1932, Stalin takes the ultimate revenge on those who dared oppose him. Because Stalin controls all food distribution, he can cut off food supplies and starve entire regions. Because he controls all travel with internal passports, his secret police can force starving millions to remain within the devastated lands. Grain elevators stand full, but grain rots on the ground as Stalin refuses to distribute food. The powerless people can do nothing to stop their master. Catastrophe strikes and lasts for two endless years. Spies watch for anyone trying to take grain from the fields. Anyone caught hiding food is executed. Desperate families resort to cannibalism. Meanwhile, the New York Times Pulitzer Prize-winning Moscow correspondent Walter Durante assures the world that there is no famine. And Stalin dupes the world by actually increasing the amount of grain exported from the Soviet Union. 
the United States and the League of Nations embrace and recognize the prosperous Soviet Union. From Moscow, Times reporter Durante secretly confides the truth to Western governments, that as many as 10 million defenseless lives have been wiped out with politically engineered starvation as the murder weapon. Lies like lions after slumber, in a vanquishable number, shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep have fallen on you. We are many. <laughs>